Hi, boys and girls, welcome. And today's story is Broken. That's the title of the story, Broken. Well, Mr. Miller was a very hardworking man who was a construction worker whose job was building commercial buildings. He had three children and a sick wife. Mrs. Miller was a housewife who took care of the household. She baked, she would wash the clothes, clean the house, oh yes, she would go shopping, that's very important. And if you do go shopping, what do you think she did? She cooked also and homeschooled her three children. She was the ideal mother anyone would appreciate. Mrs. Miller was a very frail woman. Her days became difficult to move around. The once happy home was feeling the pain of watching their mom and wife became weaker as the days go by. It wasn't long when Mr. Miller was told his wife's body weren't strong enough to continue anymore. Mrs. Miller died. It was now Mr. Miller and his three children. Things became difficult because Mr. Miller worked and he didn't know the schedule his wife had during the day. He was at work. The children age ranges from nine to 13 years old, oldest a girl and the youngest boys. Their school had to be changed from the homeschooling to public school because dad was, wasn't able to continue homeschooling because he had to work and to pay the bills. The children pitched in to help somewhere there to try and get some form of meals together, but it just wasn't like mothers. It was still difficult for them. Mr. Miller began to grow very sad as the days go by. He would cry at times and try not to let the children see him. He had to be strong for the children. Well, he did this for a while until the days and the weeks passed. He couldn't hold out anymore. Mr. Miller began to shout at the children. He didn't smile anymore. He sometimes didn't go to work and would stay in his room. You see, Mrs. Miller was the one who took the children to church. And he, she would talk to them about the love of God. But Mr. Miller didn't go to church at all. And the children needed to hear about God because they were experiencing anger within because of their mother dying. They were now thinking, why did God let their mother die? There was a church sister from the church. They went to, during the time the mother was alive, her name was Sister Willis. Well, Sister Willis brought food to the family. Mr. Miller thanked Miss uh, Willis for the food. She asked if they needed help and that she could organize the church members to provide food for the family. Mr. Miller told her they were fine and could manage. You see, Mr. Miller was a very proud man. He knew he needed the help and support, but he turned it down. They continued struggling. The children weren't doing well in school now. Their family was falling apart. Well, Sister Willis 
formed a small prayer group. The pastor and Miss Willis went to visit Mr. Miller. Surprisingly, Mr. Miller opened the door and invited them in. There, the pastor gently greeted the family. He asked about the children. Mr. Willis called his children into the room and the pastor told them he missed them from church. One of the children broke into tears and said he was sad and lonely. The next child said he didn't want to go back to church because Jesus took his mommy away. The pastor looked at the oldest child to hear her thoughts, but she just lowers her head and wiped the tears. The pastor said, I'm sorry, children, that your mother is not here with you. She was a wonderful person. She loved you, our family so much. She cared for the church also. I remembered her saying that her greatest joy is to see her family on the beautiful day when Christ comes. You see, she knew the type of illness she had. She wasn't going to be around for long. And then he took, he said, this is a letter that your mother and Mr. Miller, your wife, gave to me two months ago. The pastor took out his pocket a letter address to my family, the love of my life. The letter expressed her love to each child and then to her husband. Mr. Miller listened intensely with tears in his eyes. Mr. Miller said, I want my wife back. I miss her. Why couldn't it have been me? I don't go to church or serve God. And my wife, she's gone. She served him and she's gone. It just doesn't make sense. The pastor answered and said, Mr. Miller, death never makes sense. But I need to let you know that God didn't cause this on your family. Mr. Miller cried, why didn't God stop it then? The pastor replied, God has that answer, Mr. Miller. God didn't create us to die, but because of sin, death passes over everyone. No one knows how or when they shall die, but God offers us eternal life. God sent his son to this terrible world to save us from our sins. He died and is risen again. You see, God died for us. So we have a chance. He is gone back to heaven and is coming back again. As, guess what? King of kings and Lord of lords. Mr. Miller, if you are faithful and obedient to God, then it is a very good chance of seeing your wife again. Don't miss that opportunity. Plus, in your wife's letter, her choice is to see Jesus and for her family to be saved. The pastor added, I had a loved one that was taken from me. It was a very difficult time, but God somehow he healed my heart in some ways, but I must believe I will see my son again. 
At that moment, the youngest son came over to his dad and rested his hand on his shoulders and said, Dad, we want to see mom again. Don't you want to see her again? Mr. Miller looked in his son's eyes, then looked at his other children and said, I know I haven't been a great father lately. Please forgive me. I've been in so much pain not having your mom. I had blamed God for all this suffering. Children, yes, I want to see your mother again. He turned to the pastor and asked him, how can I see my wife again when Jesus comes? The pastor explained the love of God and how God wants to save us. Then he read two scriptures and explained it. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and hope. Then he read Psalms 34 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those whose spirits have been crushed. Children, God loves us. He does not tempt us to do wrong. God loves, He wants to save us. So, children, let's pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for making it possible to mend her, um, our heart, our broken hearts. Lord, we ask for help that we not ignore or refuse the opportunity of healing our hearts. Please help us to let go of pain, heartaches, hurt, worry, things that will hold us and tear us apart or tear us away from you. Thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, children, keep holding on. Well, as you know, I will see you where? Over at Nature Nuggets. I see you then. So, be there. Meet me there. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Well, look at this cute little animal. We got to know something about them. Okay. Their name is called koalas. Yeah, koalas. They live mainly in Australia. It is illegal to own a koala. They are at risk of extinction, meaning very soon they'll not be around anymore. A baby koala is called Joey. Does that remind you of another animal? A kangaroo's baby called Joey. The male adult is called a buck and the adult female is called a doe. Researchers say that koalas sleep for a lot of hours a day, 18 to 22 hours a day. That's almost all day. Well, their diet is of the eucalyptus tree, which they say is very toxic. So they sleep for long hours so their bodies are able to digest it. So I guess God is amazing. The body regulates so they're not poisoned. The body can digest it. They eat the bark from the bloodwood tree and the melaleuca tree and a few others. The eucalyptus leaves are succulent, so the koala do get liquids from it. The koala's color ranges from gray to reddish brown. Koalas do have a stumpy tail. Oh yes, see, back here. <laughs> 
and is covered by their fluffy fur. So it's so fluffy, you don't actually see the tail. They average about 24 pounds in weight. They measure ranging from 23 to 33 inches in length. They're a little biggish there. They have paws. See, at the end are claws, which helps them to climb up the tree. Koala eyes are very small. And they have, guess what, poor eyesight. They have big furry ears. Yes, and a big nose. They also do have a big what? Head. <laughs> they have very sharp front teeth to snip the leaves of the trees and their side teeth are used to properly chew before swallowing. Researchers say that all four legs are almost equal in size. They are long and short to be able to support their body weight when climbing up a tree. I decided to listen to the sound of a koala. You know what? It sounds like a high-pitched grunting sound cross between a pig and a bear. That's what it sounds like to me. Check it out sometime and see for yourself. What do you think? Researchers said koalas are not bears. Can you believe it? We used to say koala bears, but they said it's not, they're not bears or even related to the bear family. Although people tend to call them koala bears. They are just plain koalas. Well, thank you God for making this beautiful animal. It's so beautiful to learn about the things God made for us to enjoy. So anyway, boys and girls, I will see you when? Next Thursday. So have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.